the NFL offseason. Before we get into free agency, we're going to have to start looking inward at our own players, seeing who we would like to retain. One of those players we're going to have to discuss is Robbie Anderson. This is Jets Talk. Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Guys, let's talk Robbie Anderson. What do we do with this guy? He is in the final year of his deal, and we need to decide if we're going to re-sign him or if we're going to let him walk in free agency. Robbie Anderson came into the league in 2016 as an undrafted free agent out of Temple. The Jets gave him a shot. He played three years under his rookie contract, and then we tagged him with the second round restricted free agent tender, which paid him about $3 million. So in total, he has averaged about $4 million over the course of his four-year career. So it makes sense that he's going to want to get paid big bucks. So what are you going to have to pay Robbie Anderson? You look at his statistics, he's under a thousand yards. The offense was inept. We were like 32nd or 31st in a lot of different categories. So what is he worth to this team? What is he worth to Sam Darnold? What is he worth to Adam Gase? What is he worth to this roster in general? Well, if you look at his games from, say, the Dallas game down, and then you include the four games from last year, because I want to I want to kind of filter out some of the games early in the season because Sam had mono. I mean, you could argue he still had mono in the Cowboys game, but, you know, he wasn't really healthy. He's learning a new system. Let's take it from that Cowboys game and add in the tail end of last season just to get a rough idea. And yes, it's going to make his stats look a little more inflated. He has just under a thousand yards and eight touchdowns. So, you know, is that the peak performance that you're going to get from Robbie or is he going to play better, you know, with, uh, once he gets more money or, you know, if we get a better offensive line, these sorts of things. Uh, so when you look at that, what should he expect to get? Now I've projected that he would get a deal similar to Tyrell Williams. Tyrell Williams last year got a deal from the Raiders, four years, $44 million with $22 million guaranteed. That's $11 million a year. I think that's probably right in the wheelhouse where Robbie should be. And in fact, if you look at over the cap, if you subscribe to their premium uh, edition, no ad there, just <laughs> something I like using. Uh, based on Robbie's contract this year and the production we got out of him, he should have been worth about $9 million. We paid him $3 million this past year. So we actually gained a little bit of value on the deal from this past year. $11 million, you figure a free agent hitting the open market is going to get more than what they're actually worth. You have the hope that coming into a new system, there's better players around him. So I could see Sam, or I could see Robbie rather, getting four years, $48 million, $12 million a year. That's kind of where I pegged us to, to get him at. But then rumors came out that he was looking in the 13 to $15 million a year range, in which case... <clears throat> Ooh, man, that is a lot of money for someone who has not given you too much uh, production. Not to mention he's been arrested twice. He had the arrest for, I think it was resisting arrest at a music festival uh, a few years back. And then he had the whole, I'm going to nut in your eye as a, you know, traffic pullover stop when you get charged with like nine different things. <laughs> not something you want to invest, you know, maybe $15 million. In. That's a lot of money, especially if you're going to do it for multiple years. You're doing a four or five year deal. This is, uh, you know, could be a concern for a lot of his Jet fans. So what do we do with this moving forward? What do I think Robbie wants to do? Obviously, I think Robbie wants to get paid as much money as possible. Now, that sounds kind of silly. All players want to get as much money as possible. But Robbie didn't earn a whole lot through his first four years. So I think being that he's up for a contract year, I think he's just going to fetch the most money he possibly can. So I don't think there's going to be any sort of hometown discount across the board here. Where does he go? If he wants 13 to $15 million, the Jets have $50 million in cap space, roughly. We can make more money with you know some of the cuts we have coming. That's a lot of assets to, to devote to the wide receiver position for a guy that a lot of people will argue is kind of a one-trick pony. Yes, he can go up and get some contested balls, but we've had issues with, you know, is he too small? He's too small of a frame. Is he going to be able to fight for the ball? We saw that one really nice catch against the Steelers that I thought was probably the best catch of his career where he fought, with, uh, fought to get the ball after, you know, two defenders are groped all over him or whatever. So do you pay that much money for a receiver that, has really just been a deep threat for the majority of his career. His route running has got better, I think. He's a little lazy at times, but do you pay that much money for that kind of player? And that's tough to say. I think ideally you want to have him test the open market with the ability to sign him. So some areas uh, that I would look at for the Jets, I would offer him that that contract that we talked about, the, uh, the four-year deal, $44 million, $48 million, somewhere in that wheelhouse, see what happens. If he says no, just be like, hey, Robbie, look, we like you. We'd like to keep you on the team. 
why don't we transition tag you for a year? Now the transition tag comes with its own set of hurdles. It's the average of the top 10 players at your position and that's what you get paid. So Robbie will get paid $16 million for one year next year. Now, Robbie may opt to take that. That's a lot of money for one year. It's probably much more money than he will get from any team. I think he winds up falling in the $13 million year range, whatever. Um, but that's more money than he would get on one year playing for anyone. The benefit for the Jets with a transition tag is if Robbie signs it, it's a one-year deal. You get to test him out, hopefully with a better roster, a better offensive line, more knowledge in the offensive system for next year. So you kind of keep that consistency around Sam as well as build on things, hopefully for the future. And with the transition tag, a team is allowed to offer Robbie a contract. So Robbie is allowed to test his free agent value out on the market. So he may come back and be like, hey, you know, the best deal I got was four years, $10 million a year, $40 million. And the Jets come back and say, hey, we're gonna match that deal. We are gonna keep Robbie Anderson and that will be his new cap hit. The issue would be if Robbie Anderson doesn't get any offers, he just signs the deal and then we have him for one year. So you get the, the trial period there. Now, if a team does sign him and the Jets get the right of first refusal, maybe we decide we don't want to keep him at the price that team is offering him. Then we let him walk. We get no compensation back in terms of uh, draft assets, but we do get the potential for a 2021 comp pick. So we could get as high as a third round pick based on the contract that Robbie Anderson signs, the production he gets, and how long he stays with the team. So if the Jets were to get a third round pick for Robbie Anderson, that's something that I would definitely be interested in. I Again, we can't use it this year. It would be for the 2021 draft. But what teams could theoretically look to sign him? A lot of people have brought up two teams in particular. One is Miami because he's from the Florida area. He went to Plantation High School. So maybe he's looking to go back to a, you know, a non-income tax state. Uh, somewhere where you'd make a little bit more money because you're not getting taxed quite as hard. You have a ton of money with the Miami Dolphins, so maybe they throw a ton of money at him. He's worked with Ryan Fitzpatrick in the past. Fitzpatrick is under contract with them for, through next year. More than likely, they're going to be selecting a quarterback this year, so they have, uh, you know, he could either play with a new quarterback or have that little bit of connection with Sam or uh, with Ryan Fitzpatrick if they decide to, let's say, two a rest for a year or whoever they decide to take. So the Miami Dolphins would be a very interesting pick for the most amount of money you could probably get. If he's looking to get paid the most, I could see that being like the option. There's a few other options too. Um, I guess I should say there's there's three. The one option I could see possibly being made is the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are, you know, not in great cap shape. They do need a receiver. Maybe this is an area they could potentially look at. Um, Robbie Anderson is a burner. Like maybe think Deshaun Jackson 2.0, but maybe not quite as good as Deshaun Jackson which is kind of weird because Sean Jackson's on that team making way less money than the 13 or $15 million. But you would automatically go on a division-winning team. You would have uh, you know, a very good quarterback in place, a well-respected head coach, and you would have a shot at the playoffs year in and year out. Like This team has won a Super Bowl in recent years, so obviously it's well-equipped to handle winning. The one team I could really see Robbie going to, and I think it makes a lot of sense, is the Carolina Panthers. He has said he would be interested in playing for Matt Rule uh, in the past. Matt Rule was his head coach at Temple. He went on to coach Baylor and now is going to the Panthers as the head coach. Robbie Anderson could go there. They're going to have about $30 million. Now that Luke Keekley has retired, his signing bonus accelerates all to this one year in cap. So they save about $3 million from him. A lot will probably hinge on the Cam Newton decision. He's due $19.1 million, uh, or I'm sorry, he is due $21 million, $19 million would be the cap savings if they decide to cut him because he doesn't have any guaranteed money left on his deal. So a lot could factor in on, hey, are we keeping Cam Newton? Do we want to give him some more weapons? Maybe, you know, allow Robbie to run over one of those Hail Mary bomb type passes that Cam could throw uh, and hopefully, you know, have an explosive off offense with, you know, Greg Olson and DJ Moore and Christian McCaffrey, all these weapons that they could potentially have. Do Does he sign there? Is that an area that he could go, but I don't know. That's where I would picture him going. I think maybe he's got some loyalties there. There's a familiar face. I would like to see him stay a Jet. Obviously, I think that's something that, you know, you want to retain your own. The salary cap's going to keep increasing. Last year was $188 million. This year is projected to be about $200 million, so it's going to go out of, up about $12 million. Now, every team gets that money. It's not just like the Jets are getting it, but if you can retain your own free agents, I think it shows something valuable to the younger guys on your roster. Hey, you work hard for this team. You're going to get paid. And that's my sort of thought with Robbie. 
The issue with Robbie is that he has so many, uh, you know, potential hurdles with the with the arrests, with the relatively low production for the amount he's asking for. What do you do? What is the right answer here? Now, as far as replacements go, you could look at Demarcus Robinson. He is the wide receiver for the Chiefs. This is someone that I've kind of harped on over the course of the last few years. His over-the-cap valuation put him at around $5 million this past year. So if you could get him for that 5 to $6 million range on a very short deal, maybe you could sign an extra offensive lineman and have him. Now, I want to make this clear. Robinson is not the burner that Robbie is. He is not you know, the 4-3 speed. He is like 4-5 speed, 4-6 speed, something like that. It's not like an absolute... Uh, burner over the top. He's shorter than Robbie. He doesn't have the vertical of Robbie, but you're getting him for pennies on the dollar. So in that respect, could you take 85% of what, uh, you know, Robbie Anderson is with Demarcus Robinson? Remember, he was the fourth receiver on a team that had Tyree Kill, Sammy Watkins, uh, Travis Kelsey. Like th these are legitimate playmakers in front of him where he really did not get an opportunity to handle the ball. So I think in terms of potential fit for a player that may make sense for us. That's a player I'd like to see us look at. Honestly, I think I'd be good with the transition tag. Let him test free agency, get the third round comp pick if he does sign somewhere else. Guys, let me know of everything you think of down in the comments below. And as always, go Jets.